Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear participants of the conference. First of all, do you see and hear my well? This talk is in memory of my teacher, Professor Vitaly Sushansky. He introduced us to the subject. Many theorems in this talk are further developments of uh, his idea outlined in his papers and uh, joint papers with him. He's unfortunately not with us, but he's in our memory with our great gratitude, homage, uh, and love. We talk about local matrix algebras. Great mind uh, very involved in this subject in order. We call an associative F algebra a local matrix. Uh, well, the terminology is due to Alexander Kurosh if for. Uh, each finite subset of this algebra, there exists a subalgebra containing this finite subset, which is isomorphic to some matrix algebra. And uh, such algebra is unital if it contains unity. During this talk, we try uh, to make the comparative analysis between countable dimensional and uncountable dimensional cases. We call a unit of local matrix algebra primary if all its matrix subalgebras contain unit and are isomorphic to matrix algebras of fixed prime number p to some positive integers power. Gottfried Kyoto in 1931 proved that every countable dimensional unit of local matrix algebra admits a decomposition into an infinite tensor product of matrix algebras and admits a primary decomposition. In 1942, Alexander Kurosh constructed an example of unit of local matrix algebra of uncountable dimension that does not admit a decomposition into an infinite uh, tensor product of matrix uh, algebras. Another example of this kind is a Clifford algebra. We will talk about it later. Vladimir Kurochkin in 1948 studied the uniqueness of uh, primary decompositions. At that time, Kurochkin was a graduate student of Kurosh. Uh, this was his PhD thesis. Uh, later, he developed the first Soviet programming languages and uh, became the first Soviet specialist in computer science. Well, Kurosh and Kurochkin further studied existence and uniqueness of uh, such decompositions of unit and local matrix algebras of arbitrary dimensions. And in particular, Kurochkin formulated the question, does every unital local matrix algebra have a primary decomposition? We know that Kurosh's example is a primary algebra. We would like to give examples of uh, such algebras. First one, is the direct limit of sequences of matrix algebras with embeddings. If the embedding preserves the unit, then it is diagonal. Next example is a Clifford algebra, which is determined by vector space over field F and non-degenerate quadratic form F. A mapping called a quadratic form if uh, such that two conditions, uh, I and double I, hold. The meaning of the Clifford algebra is to associately expand uh, the space V and multiplication such that the square of each vector V is equal to the given quadratic form F. Theorem one, so if V is infinite dimensional vector space, then a Clifford algebra is a unital locally matrix. Next example is a generalized Clifford algebra determined by the set of generators X sub i and following defining relations. 
these algebras in a more general form were introduced uh, by physicists. And uh, theorem two, for any infinite ordered set i, the generalized Clifford algebra is a unital locally matrix algebra. James Gleam in 1960 linked countable dimensional unital locally matrix algebras to Steinitz numbers. So recall that a Steinitz number is a product of all prime numbers to some positive integers and thereof or to the infinity powers. These numbers were used by Ernest Steinitz in 1910 as a part of his work on the field theory. So we did note by SN all Steinitz numbers uh, by SN without a set of all positive integers, uh, infinite Steinitz numbers, and uh, uh, locally finite Steinitz number is uh, the product uh, of prime numbers to powers except at the infinity. The current definition for arbitrary dimensional locally matrix algebras was uh, introduced in our paper uh, with Bodan Olinik. Uh, we define a Steinitz number of a unital locally matrix algebra as a least common multiple of this set DA of all positive integers and such that there exists an uh, algebra of matrices of order n. Gleam defines Steinitz number in terms uh, of ascending chains of matrix of algebras. Therefore, his definition assumed countable dimension. This definition appear in our paper. Gleam proved uh, in 1960 uh, that two countable dimensional unit are locally matrix algebras are isomorphic if and only if their Steinitz numbers are equal. The analogical result was obtained uh, by three authors, uh, Vitaly Sushansky, Budan Olinik, and Oksana Bezushak in 2016 for more general class. So theorem three, two countable dimensional rational structures are isomorphic if and only if their Steinitz numbers are equal. In case of a course example, the Steinitz number is two to the power infinity. The Steinitz number of Clifford algebra is also 2 to the power infinity, and uh, the Steinitz number of generalized Clifford algebra is L to the power infinity. We proved that a unit of locally matrix algebra is primary if and only if its Steinitz number is some prime number to some positive integers or infinite power. Theorem 4. For any infinite locally finite Steinitz number S, there exists uh, an uncountable dimensional unit of locally matrix algebra such that its Steinitz number is equal to S, and uh, this algebra does not have a primary decomposition. Well, this theorem answers the question of Kurochkin. Kurochkin's example has stained its number two to the power infinity. Well, now we are ready to construct examples with almost all stained its numbers. The theorem five says about it: for any infinite stained its number does not equal to characteristic of the ground field to the power infinity times n. There exists a unit of locally matrix algebra with Steinitz number S that does not admit a decomposition into an infinite tensor product of matrix algebras. The following theorem shows that Gleam's result does not extend to uncountable dimensions. Theorem 6. There exists 
uh, non-isomorphic unit of local matrix algebras uh, with uh, the same uncountable dimensions uh, and uh, with equal Steinitz numbers. Therefore, in uncountable dimensions, Steinitz invariant does not determine the unit of local matrix algebras. So, what does it determine? Now we are talking about uh, some invariant. We denote by symbol UTHA and the universal theory of the algebra A, namely uh, the set of all universal formulas that hold on algebra A. Um, that is to say, all formulas contain only quantifiers of one kind, Fermi. Theorem 7. Steinitz numbers of unit and local matrix algebras are equal if and only if their universal theories are equal to. So Steinitz invariants determine universal properties. Morita equivalents. Unital algebras are called Morita equivalent if the categories of their left models are equivalent. And uh, a property P is Morita invariant if uh, any two Morita equivalent algebras do satisfy or do not satisfy property P simultaneously. Properties uh, that we study are Morita invariant and uh, theorem 8. Being a unit of local matrix algebra is a Morita invariant property and uh, being isomorphic to the tensor product of matrix algebras is a Morita invariant property too. We say that uh, staying its numbers S sub 1 and uh, S sub 2 are rationally connected if uh, S sub 2 is equal to S sub 1 times some rational number. Theorem 9. Uh, the first, if uh, unit of local matrix algebras are Morita equivalent, then their Steinitz numbers are rationally connected. The second, if unit of local matrix algebras are countable dimensional, then they are Morita equivalent if and only if their Steinitz numbers are rationally connected. And uh, uh, the thought uh, for any Steinitz number except positive integers and characteristic of the ground field to the power infinity times uh, a positive integer, there exists non Morita equivalent uncountable dimensional unit of local matrix algebras with equal Steinitz numbers. What can we say in non-unital case? Jacques Dixmier in 1967 described some countable uh, dimensional non-unital C algebras uh, considered by Gleam. Alexander Baranov in 2012 extended a countable dimensional non-unital local matrix algebras over an arbitrary field. So the next task is to try to find Steinitz invariants for non-unital local matrix algebras of arbitrary dimensions. Dixmier showed that a corner of a local matrix algebra is a local matrix algebra, hence for any idempotent E, the corner EAE is a unit of local matrix subalgebra. So we can talk about its stain, its number. Let us denote uh, some sets. A spectrum A is uh, the set of stain, its numbers of corners uh, for all idempotent uh, from an algebra A. Omega lower S is the set of positive integers dividing a Steinitz number lower S. 
And uh, we say that a subset S of the set of Steinitz numbers is separated if it satisfies following conditions. The first, uh, that uh, all Steinitz numbers in the set S are rationally connected. Uh, the second, if um, a number lower S uh, belongs to S and a positive integers B belongs to omega lower S, then lower s divided by b belongs to s. And the third, if a number lower s belongs to s, a positive integer b belongs to omega lower s, and n divided by b times lower s belongs to s, then for any i from 1 to n, positive integers i divided by b times lower s belongs to s. For any locally matrix algebra A, the spectrum A is a saturated subset. Hence, a unital algebra is described by Steinitz number and uh, theorem 10, non-unital locally matrix algebra is uh, described by some set of Steinitz numbers a spectrum. And a spectrum of uh, such algebra is uh, described by saturated subsets. Some examples of saturated subsets for any Steinitz numbers or only infinite Steinitz numbers. The first one is the set of positive numbers from 1 to n. Uh, the next three sets consist of positive integers uh, a divided by b times s uh, for b from omega s in the second case, and uh, the same with the exception of positive integers a um, from 1 to including or not including and here of uh, r times b in the third case. Why do, you, do we need these sets? Because theorem 11, the only saturated subsets of the set of all Steinitz numbers are those four kinds of sets. And the following theorem 12 gives another proof of Dijkstier-Baranov theorem. Theorem 12. If countable dimensional locally matrix algebras have coinciding spectrums, then these algebras are isomorphic. Now let us consider derivations and automorphisms of locally matrix algebras. We consider the Lie algebra of all derivations, so the Lie algebra of inner derivations, and the Lie algebra of outer derivations. So, how large is uh, the Lie algebra of outer derivations? Sharkata Yupov and Karim Kudaybergenov in 2020 found uh, an outer derivation in a countable dimensional unit of local matrix algebra of Steinitz number 2 to the power infinity. Well, by Gleam's theorem, there is only one such algebra up to an isomorphism. Helmut Strade in 1999 studied derivations of diagonal locally simple Lie algebras over a field of characteristics zero. These algebras <coughs> are very close to our case. So from ayupov kodaybregenov result, it follows that at least for one Steinitz number, it is non-zero. Let us introduce some notation. The group of all automorphisms, uh, the group of uh, conjugations uh, by invertible elements, and uh, the group of outer uh, uh, automorphisms. So theorem the team says that the first, the Lie algebra of inner derivations is dense in the Lie algebra of all derivations with respect to the Tikhonov topology. And the second, the group 
of conjugations by invertible elements is dense in the group of all automorphisms uh, with respect to the Tikhonov topology and the closure of this group uh, with respect to the Tikhonov topology on a Cartesian power of uh, the algebra A is uh, the semi-group of all injective endomorphisms uh, of a unital algebra A into itself. Let us give a more precise description of derivations. Following Kyoto's theorem, a countable dimensional unital local matrix algebra is isomorphic to a countable tensor product of matrix algebras. Therefore, we consider derivations of an arbitrary infinite, not necessary countable tensor product of matrix algebras. We call a system P of non-empty finite subsets of infinite set I a sparse system if all non-empty subsets of any set S from the system P also lie in the system P. And uh, the second condition, an arbitrary element uh, from I lies in no more than finitely many subsets from P. And uh, for each subset S of a sparse system, let us denote as a symbol S sub S, a finite tensor product of matrix algebras and choose some element lower a sub s from it. Then the sum of inner derivations by elements lower a sub s converges in the Tikhonov topology to a derivation of our algebra a. Indeed, for all but uh, finitely many subsets of a sparse system, we have that these inner derivations act uh, on elements from the algebra A trivially. Let D sub P be the vector space of all such infinite convergent uh, sums of inner derivations by elements lower A sub S from A sub S for a subset S from the sparse system P. And in each subalgebra A sub i, choose a subspace such that A sub i is a direct sum of a field F and that subspace. In each subspace, choose a basis and denote the tensor product of basis E sub i sub 1, etc., E sub i sub R by a symbol E sub S. And uh, the theorem 14 contains uh, a description of all derivations uh, of an infinite tensor product of matrix algebras. The first, if a set I is countable, then the Lie algebra of all derivations is a union of set D sub P for all sparse systems of the set I. And the second, the union of finite sets of inner derivations of tensor products of bases of such subspaces for all subsets of a sparse system P is a topological basis of the set D sub P. And the next theorem 15 is about uh, some application. For a countable dimensional local matrix algebra, the Lie algebra of outer derivations is not locally finite dimensional. So the Lie algebra of outer derivation is not too small. Description of automorphisms. First of all, we begin with some notation. So let A be a countable dimensional local matrix algebra and let H sub N be a group of conjugations by invertible elements from the tensor product of matrix algebras 
a sub i for indexes a from n to the infinity. And uh, let us consider a descending sequence of uh, subgroups h sub 1, h sub 2, etc. And let x sub n be a system of representatives of left cosets of the subgroup h sub n plus 1 in the subgroup h sub n. We assume that each x sub n contains the identical uh, automorphism. Every infinite product phi sub 1, phi sub 2, etc., from the transversal x sub n converges in the Tikhon of topology to the injective endomorphism phi. Theorem 16. An arbitrary unital injective endomorphism can be uniquely represented as an infinite product of such automorphisms. So the question is, when is such infinite product phi an automorphism? We call a sequence of automorphisms integrable if for an arbitrary element A from other algebra, the subspace spanned by all elements phi sub n, etc., phi sub 1, act on A is finite dimensional. Theorem 17. An objective endomorphism phi is an uh, automorphism if and only if uh, the sequence of uh, inverse to the automorphisms phi sub 1, phi sub 2, etc., is uh, integrable. Last section of our talk is about dimensions of Lie algebras of derivations and orders of groups of automorphisms. Theorem 18, for infinite tensor product of matrix algebras, the dimension of Lie algebras of its derivations is equal to the dimension of Lie algebras of its outer derivations and is equal to the cardinality of the field to the power of the cardinality of the set I. And next, theorem 19. For countable dimensional locally matrix algebra, the dimension of Lie algebras of its derivations is equal to the uh, dimension of the algebras of its outer derivations and is equal to the cardinality of the field to the power of the countable cardinality. Next, theorem 20. For countable dimensional locally matrix algebra, the order of groups of its automorphisms is equal to the order of groups of its outer automorphisms and is equal to the power of the countable cardinality. In this slide, the list of our article on this topic and uh, some further directions. First of all, locally semi-simple algebras, uh, we refer to a survey by Anatoly Vershik and Sergei Kerov. Locally simple groups, uh, we refer to a survey by Alexander Zaleski, also, the diagonal locally simple the algebras, we refer to series of papers by Alexander Baranov, Yuri Bakhturin, Ivan Penkov, Vera Serganova, Karl Nyorman Nip, et al. And of course, uh, Hemming Spaces, we refer to series of papers by Vitaly Svishansky, Vodan Alinik, uh, Petr Cameron, et al. Thank you for your attention.